Well, I guess I gotta add another item to the project list. I left my jacks over there on the other side of the building. My brother thought they were junk. Rightly so. The jacks were junk. So the jacks actually were junk. Right on him to throw them out. But I needed the cross bracing on it. So now, and I was gonna pick them up like a week ago, but they were all frozen into the mud. So now, I gotta build cross bracing for those. Which, honestly, is probably not that bad of a job. It'll just take time. So, and we don't really need it until, until we load everything up with fluid. So, eh, whatever. That'll happen. Hey folks, figured I'd do a status update. Because you probably haven't seen much of me lately because I've been awfully busy doing kind of off farm stuff. I had some farm meetings here and there, uh, like farmer producer meetings with company ABC, whatever. Had some book work to do. Had actually, we had a big fundraiser last week that, for the Wildlife Federation. That was a big success, and I, I had a lot of work on that. But now she's pretty much straight farming and we're gonna be getting back hopefully i plan on getting back to the two videos a week and yeah that, sh that should be a lot better so this will be oh reminder like and subscribe always like and subscribe and leave me comments if you like what i'm doing or have questions let me know but this video is going to be the last tender trailer update until she's complete. And she's not far from complete, but you know, there's gotta be the, I'm sure there's gonna be a couple leaks and a couple things I forgot or a couple modifications, but let's take a look at what I've been working on. All right, so let's start and you know, you'll have to excuse the weather because Saskatchewan, we don't know if we want snow or heat, it seems like on any given day, but we get both. So, tank one, directly to tank two. I did end up snapping this guy. There was a valve there, if you look at one of my older videos. And so that snapped flush, unfortunately. And I could not get it out, so I ended up having to go into that tank, which was all of about 15 seconds. It was a real easy job. And had somebody spin the nut on from the outside. So tank one, tank two. We're gonna pop through the floor, follow all the way back. I just finished building a bracket to mount that thing. You'll see, and I don't know how this happened. It is very subtle. But the, the door on the tote rack, just a hair out of square. And I'm not sure why, because it was very square. But then we flipped it a few times, maybe it bent. I, I'm not really sure. Anyhow, so we've got that. Because actually, they were a hair sprung. I was thinking that would come back to square, but it kind of just par parallelogrammed a little bit. Anyhow, sorry. Let's follow our water run. Tank one, tank two. That's our pump fill line. So if we have a two inch or three inch pump on the ground, say we're pumping from a tank or from dugout, it's gonna come out of that or into that. And that's also our suction line. So -da -da -da. there's your pump, T. A lot of plumbing. Holy crap, are those pieces expensive. And, like, it's not just a piece. Every time you buy a piece, it's like, oh, you need one of the, these clamps, and then you need a, a rubber for in there. And holy, it adds up in a hurry. But we got everything hard lined. Tank three, I had to move this guy from here to there. I like this guy because it's a bit lower, but such is life. And tank four. I have these guys set up 
the ladders set up that they can kick out. You know what, I'm getting ahead of myself. Right now I have the doors on. The handrails do fall down to the front. As you can see, I've got some rope. We have some nice stiff spot to grab so that it's not flexing. This is, so th these handrails fold all the way straight down. These guys fold pretty much 180. I didn't think of this, but it does bind right there before. So it, it swings nice and wide open. The handrails are mismatched. Yes, I know. They don't match color wise. They will get painted this summer. I just have not had time, but they were salvaged out of my brother's scrap pile. He had an old set that were on top of a fueling station and they were kind of twisted up in a few places, but I, I got the good stuff out of it. So I finished this bracket today on both sides. It's, it just needs to get properly mounted and welded. It probably looks not perfectly square and that's because it's not, it needs to get kicked over just a little bit and then I'll grind it into place, find, you know, weld her up. Uh, tomorrow, hopefully, I'm getting the quick clamp, spring clip pin, what are they called? Barrel, barrel pin, barrel spring pin. So I'll mount one here and on the other side, I, I'm going to have to weld a tab for it to hook to. Also going to weld or have one up there so it'll hook in there. And another one over there, so little tabs I need to weld on. I also need to weld on the other side. I got a couple of braces, or sorry, not braces, hose hangers. Interestingly enough, today I found out that I need to make new brace cross braces because my brother accidentally threw the cross bracing in the dumpster, or in the scrap metal bin, and we thought nothing of it. And then we're sitting there, it's like, oh, I'll wait till tomorrow. It's not supposed to be snowy and wet tomorrow. And then we hit in the shop, we hear, um, I'm like, uh oh. And we go out and they're, yep, they're taking away the scrap metal. So, which is fine. I, I don't mind making new cross bracing. It's not that big of a deal. Or we're, oh, I haven't put the um, license plate on yet. Better do that soon before I forget. On this side, we still need to put the hose on. Not a big deal. It's pretty easy, actually. I have everything over here braced up, but some of it needs to get cleaned up. You can see that, you know, just got some rough edges and overhang, so we'll cut and clean that up. I don't, yeah, so I put a brace there as well as there to stiffen everything up, and it really helps. This guy is nice and stiff too, so that's not gonna sag and crack any fittings. Obviously need to put you back in place. And what's left to do here? Here's a, probably a shorter list. The barrel, pins, whatever, thingamajobs. The, well, obviously I just said that. I wanna change that guy around to the other side just to stiffen that guy up and give me a little more room. I need to extend this guy and make a mount as well for it. That's just gonna be on a handle for the valve in here. I did think about possibly plumbing it differently, but that was way after the fact. I should have done it differently, but that's where we are. I have Two pieces of plywood left to go on, but they need some tr cutting and trimming. I think I'm gonna take this box off. Don't really think we need it. I have another box at the farm. And I may, I may put it back here a bit so that it's not in the way of the hose. Cause you know, your hose has a nice curve to it. To be determined. 
Also might put it on the other side because that's probably the side we'll use more. But really we just have a few fittings and odds and ends that we need to store somewhere. To be determined. But put that hose on, handful of welds, that uh, cross bracing, and I need to do to fill that with fuel and oil, the pump, oil, and rig in a battery. The battery's gonna probably get tucked under here somewhere. Just because then it's out of, not that I'm worried about it getting wet, it's just I don't want to be tripping on it. I also need to mount the chemical pump. So it's going to go back here somewhere, possibly again underneath there. And then I will run the, uh, the switch for it out here somewhere, just in an easy access spot. And I need to put a bulkhead, let's go up. Need to put a bulkhead probably over here, just like this, so that we can drag fill if we need. And then it's probably time to test run once we're done all of that. Well, we're, we'll have to wait until it's not going to freeze much. Yeah, we're we're getting to the. The short list, I obviously got a bunch of junk I need to throw away. The problem is that it's very wet on the back side of the shop. But yeah, I'm very, very, very excited about this. I decided to kibosh the lights for now. But in the future, I'm trying to do this without falling. And I hurt my back earlier today too. It'll be fine tomorrow, don't worry about that. What I think I might do is run a like a seven foot pole right there, straight up with a LED light on each side. Again, that can be done at a later date. Painting's gonna be done at a later date. You know, when my hands aren't friggin' wet and froze. Yeah, and probably find a few other things to do as things go on, but like, I'm not really worried about that gauge in there, but I will fix it eventually. See what I can do about, like that's just too big for what we need, and it's all busted out. You'll see, all the corners are cracked. Hinges busted, if I open her up, there's cracks all over the place. All the corners are busted out. It's just a lot of work for something that's really going to carry a gas can and a handful of other stuff. And so I'll probably, sorry, probably keep a gas can over there. I don't see why we couldn't. But I, oh, something else I need to do is plumb in my autofill system. I like to have it on this back corner somewhere. I have it in the back of my truck. I just need it to, it'll probably end up going probably here. Go straight up over to the other side we'll see yeah she's uh i'm very happy i if i'm honest i wasn't very happy about four days ago because it just wasn't looking how i envisioned but it was once i put the handrails and the the ladders on i started getting quite quite pleased with how it's turning out. Aside from these, this is pissing me off that they're just out of square that little bit. So, next time you see this, she should, should be fully operational, ready to go. I'm hoping in the next, definitely by Friday to be done. But as I mentioned, dad is back. 
The snowbird is back. I never thought I would call him that, but that's what he is now. And he's earned it. So this will be ready to go. I'll have to teach him how to use it, but it's, I think it's pretty simple because I'm guessing how to use it as well. And we're gonna start changing oils this week. We're gonna hopefully hook onto the drill. It's still in a bit of snow. Oh, it's my hand cold. It's not even that cold, it's just wet. And that, in the wind, and yeah, it's ugly. So we're gonna get a bunch of oil changes done and you know, we got what, two or three grain truck or two grain trucks and the semi here, uh, two tractors and sprayer. That's the bulk of it for oil changes, lube, all the tractors, moving parts, and blow out air filters, clean out cabs, get the GPS systems up and ready to run, and yeah, once we hook onto the drill, then we got to start, you know, we'll check hoses. We have all those new points to change out, the Dutch in-row points, and I'll show you more on that later. As well, we have the, not ag leader, um, intelligent ag blockage system that we're going to be putting on. So I'll probably do a video on both of those, like, separately, as well as other stuff. We have some rollers and bearings to replace on the cedar, uh, bushings, probably some bolts, probably some hoses oh tires as well we got a lot of work on the cedar um, it does look kind of like winter's gone but it's still freezing a lot at night there's still a lot of water up in in the park and in in the field and everywhere else I would I would expect we'll get going in, today is April 5th, I'm guessing three to four weeks, somewhere between April 27th and March 2nd, March, May 2nd is my guess on when we'll get rolling. Right now we've got no shortage of moisture, so that's good. Whether that stays for the rest of the year or rest of spring, that's a very different story. But I know there's guys out out to the west of us that are, have been going for 8 to 10 days already. And we are not even thinking about it. Nobody is around here. Typically, you're around here unless she's bone dry. Like You get guys 50k south of here that will probably go in the next, I would say, 10 days if conditions are right. Not very often you see it up here. Typically, we're, like I said, the last third of April is about the earliest we ever get going. In 2020, and I should have been recording in 2020 because it was no fun. We didn't get going until May 7th because it was just sloppy and wet. And, like, there was mud and then there was ice underneath it. It was no fun. Anyhow, stay tuned for more.